Hi, hey, John here. This is my dinner. There, we've got kamo kamo or marrow, tomato, and yellow curry, and um, mince, and bacon, or ham. 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 Ham is in there somewhere. There's mince, beef, and bits of ham. There's some bits of ham there. Look. Bits of ham there. Nice. It's a little bit hot. Now um, with the um, this um, curry here, just try curry here. Get a curry there. I love I love get a curry. It's a beautiful flavour. I like eating it from the restaurant. If we got bread here, bread there, and that. Look at the size of it. Look at that, would ya? I'll just clean that one out and I'm getting full on one. And then you've got that one there. I've got to get three. I'm not going to eat all of that. I'll just leave some for the morning. You can see, looking in there, that it's absolutely gorgeous. The rows are absolutely gorgeous. I'll just get one out and show you. Over here, piece to bread. See? Yes, my daughters love this. I hope they're watching in Britain and Spain. Mmm! Disappeared. Some of this. A bit of bacon. With a tomato, so that's basically the tin has been demolished, they're, they're, they're quite fat for their size, and I think by listening to them at the shop, they get them from Waiheke Island. Just like the old days, I just die for these things all the time, and I'm just um, supposed to be doing all my work, but get around to it tomorrow. The days are getting a heat, so I'm just on my side at the moment. Um, just posting some documents and uh, well, I won't go on anything about it, but I just wanted to show you my dinner, that's all. And just show you how my day went. I'm feeling pretty good. The tinners make me sleep properly and good for the heart. I always know that all my life that tinners clean me up and make me sit um, properly in my brain. It's good um, as a uh, food source with iron in it and just the flavour, the taste. I've got the green or yellow curry. That's it's a bit hot, but I like hot. I'm going to put the fan on because that's hot too. Blow the air in here. I'll get me you know, a nice place yet, but um, just with my uh, girlfriend up in um, LA, um, Castellina. In, um, Philippines. So I want to go over there and have a look around. I want to get all our title projects going uh, some stage. But I'm looking at construction sites all the time, how, how best to build it, most economically. And um, 
um, with the um, budget to make the best way uh, of uh, doing the whole thing. It's the best to buy a ship, a cargo ship or container cargo ship, and stack all the steel on it. I, I wouldn't put it in containers, I'd just stack them straight into the ship hold, it's the cargo ship, just for this. I'll, I'll get a cargo ship just for this and cover them all up to save all the trouble packing containers. I just didn't want containers in there, but I'll get one ship for containers and one for just the steel and all the materials to put the buildings straight up. Um, and all the steel pre-cut, ready to weld up when they get here. I don't want to weld it up overseas, then ship it over. I've found the exercise was best to build it here, bring the engineers here from South Korea. If we're going to be dealing with um, uh, the way things are going with the United States of America joining later this year, the Commonwealth countries, as one of the Commonwealth countries, then that's going to put a big change on the way business is done through the world with America still under the British system. The Queen is doing a duty on all the Commonwealth countries by double acting and acting inside the EU Parliament and also acting as if she's in the Westminster Parliament she's trying to shut down. If you can see, I'm going to explain all of this on a video with this apostoly sealed documents that go straight into Britain with this flag. This is the ultimate of the British Empire, the flag with the four stars in the corners, north, east, south, west of the world, of municipalities to collect all the money for the leased lands, conquered lands of the British Empire. This is our empire's state flag given by a king of all of that commerce that was made with this power note that I'm using as our right to use those acts of King William IV and King William III the creator of the Bank of England and also the creator of the eight point star on our flag that I'm wearing I'm claiming that over the top of anybody else using that eight point star in Northern Ireland in Belfast that's my family right there the Cosgroves and the Rogans, the Wynors and the Patricks, the Patrick family connected straight to me here in New Zealand where the Queen has run her Maori business. She's getting a big bill. All the Iwi Maori, take note, I'm citing you on this video today, Wednesday the 10th of January 2018 the middle of my dinner, that I'm citing you Ngāti Whātua o Ōraki and Ngāti Whātua o Kaipara and Te Uri Ahau, Te Rōrua, Ngāti Rāhiri, Ngāti Kawa, Ngāti Kahu and all those tribes who are in the treaty claims claiming against lost lands. You lost your land your Maori land, we still got the Maui land and the King's land. We still got our contract. You've got your contract with the Queen. The Queen is mischievous. You've got no seal of the Queen here in New Zealand. You've got no seal of Westminster Parliament to run your government in Wellington. You have no jurisdiction over what I've done. You lost the case in Auckland District Court, you'll lose every case thereafter because I've got more information on you and you have lack of information, insufficient information of anyone in the CIB, police, and the government here. The police covered up the fraud case of John Key, ex-Prime Minister, and covered up the case of 77 Cook Street and the land title transfer under this 1862 Refa Refa Manukau and Rogan title. That's a big fraud case of land transactions that comes under this flag 
of the British Empire kings, the ones that put the commercial contracts together, starting from King William III, banknotes, pound notes, their coins, gold, gold coins, all that money that's been made from Admiralty Magistrate Courts has gone through him and on to King George IV. King George IV, straight to King George IV with our New Zealand titles to these native lands are not Maori lands. They are originally Moriori lands and native lands of those who are outside the Treaty of Waitangi claims. You're all stuck in a treaty claim with the Queen and we have this other King's claim right over the top of you. Okay, that's all I want to say. I'm going to have my dinner finish it off. I just thought I'd throw that in against you. The Waitangi National Trust NZ Invest New Zealand Limited, you're on notice, uh, as I'm saying it. The CEOs of all those companies and all the trustees of the Crown Corporation Queen, all getting this trillion pound note on your heads. Everyone, every single one in the world under this British Admiralty Court Martial Law of these British Empire King Makers comes back with this flag of jurisdiction and contracts. Okay, that's all. I'll see you later. I'm going to finish my kennels off and settle back into the construction of steel. That's on my brain at the moment. I'm going back through the British Empire here, okay? I'm going back through here. It's starting at the 1800s. It's starting in the 1800s, 17th, 18th centuries of the Netherlands and France left England. And we're going, travelling down here through um, 1815, there. 1792, 1815, Britain emerged as a principal naval and imperial power of the 19th century. Imperial power of the 19th century from 1792 to 1815. Okay, so just before the 1820 period, Bayer became global, hedged mon, and adopted the role of global policeman. Early 19th century, the Industrial Revolution began to transform Britain to the time of the Great Exhibition. In 1851, the country was described as the workshop of the world. Expanded most of India, parts of Africa, and America. I'll just find a little bit more here. Um, on this part to solidify our authority. I'll fix everybody up that's standing in the road of this flag. After independence, many former British colonies joined the Commonwealth of Nations, a free association of independent states. The United Kingdom is one of 16 Commonwealth countries as nations grouping known informally as the Commonwealth Realms, that share a monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. So I'm going to go through this. The Second British Empire, 1783 to 1815. So from the 1815 through the 1820 periods, that's where I'm going from. It's, it's gotten here. Um, 1694 is, is King William III with the pound note. So we've picked up that pound note here after this period of the Second British Empire onto this one, 1815. There we go. 1815 to 1914. That's where we are at. East India Company in Asia, rival with Russia, Cape of Cairo, changing status with white colonies. Now, this is the period we're going into. East India Company and 1815, that one. This is where I'm going into, where we come into it with 1823, King William IV, um, King George IV, and uh, Te Rewaikato Whare Here Here Manukau. 
You see, they've hidden all the history away of that chief. 1834, there's, there's the 1st of August 1834 finally bringing the empire in line with the law in the UK, with the exception of St. Helena. There's 1834, this flag. This flag here is 1834, right there. And 1832, 1831, East India Company, and 1831 at Tikitiki, the births and deaths marriage certificates came in. 1831, King William IV. This is King William IV period of time here, 1834-1832. And this period of 1815 to 18, 1914 is where Te Rewaikato Wharehere Manikau, Chief of Cambridge, is missing. I've yet to go through here to find where it is with King George IV. See, they've jumped, they've jumped right over with the Queen's history, jumped right over King George IV but they've got King William III in here, linked to her, so that they can steal our flag of 1834, that flag there. It's going right on the head. Daryl Payne, I'm just telling you, I'm looking at the history here of 1815 to 1914, this period here of our chiefs, 1823, and King George IV contract. Contract makes law, law makes contract. That's it. <coughs> See, it's missing. I've got to find it in the monks all this year, 1824, Singapore, okay, I've got to find in the detail where is 1823 of Hokianga in New Zealand and London, where is it? Charters Act, I've got to go right over this and pull it out and cite it, I'll cite it. See, they jump straight into Queen Victoria and leave out where is King George IV? Contract with Te Rewaikato. I'll, I'll find it, but anyway, that's all I wanted to do for now. In 1650, 1694 was the Bank of England Act. 1830s to 1840s. Oh, you see, I can't see the, the 1823 anywhere. I'll find it. Is Canada there? Where's New Zealand? Where is New Zealand? Where is the Queen's Maori people? League of Nations, Ma uh, League of Nations, that's where I go. League of Nations. That's where we went from the BNZ here in New Zealand and uh, the Old Oil Bank. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there and I'll finish my dinner and carry on. Okay, we'll see you later. John Wanoa, Uru, Auckland, New Zealand. Bye.